Today we're looking at the Sapphire Vaporex R9280X graphics card. This is part of the new lineup of GPUs from AMD. So let's go ahead and get this thing unboxed. While we're doing that I'll tell you a little bit about it. This card has a core clock of 950MHz and a boost clock of 1070MHz. It has 3GB of GDDR5 memory at 6200MHz effective speed with a 384-bit bus. It's built on a 28 nanometer chip with 2048 stream processors. In the box we have an HDMI cable, a crossfire bridge, two 8 pin to 4 pin power cables, an installation guide, and the normal driver's disk and warranty information stuff, etc, etc. Now let's look at the card itself. It has two Vaporex branded fans. The plastic of the shroud kind of feels a bit too... I hesitate to say cheap because this card is really not cheap. But I just don't really like the feel of it. It has DisplayPort, HDMI, DVI-D and DVI-I sockets along with some nice big vents here for cooling. It's got this nice looking Vaporex backplate that covers most of the components at the back and just feels really solid and nice. It has two Crossfire connections for up to four GPUs to be connected together and has two 8 pin power connectors, so this uses a lot, a lot of power. These four heat pipes here are pretty much all we can see of the X Vapor system, but I can assure you it works very well. But enough talking, let's look at some benchmarks. So there we go, they show that this card is pretty much an absolute beast. It's going to run pretty much any game you're going to throw at it. Uh, it's got a very good cooler on it, the Vaporex cooler on this, really very good. Uh, I won't go into details about that, but it works very well. It stayed below 80 degrees, even with the overclock that I put on it which compared to the 770 that I tested well I've tested you haven't seen that yet but I have tested it which got really hot at stock speed so yeah the, it stays pretty good it feels really solid I'm not too keen on the plasticky bit here as I said before but this back plate is really solid really nice and it's got a lovely effect on it and it lights up and this this looks good in your system I think this will last you a good couple of years I think you won't need to upgrade again uh, it's around 250 pounds for this version they do do a slightly better version the toxic version sapphire do and obviously you can get like the Asus direct CU2 and stuff like that that'll also be good or the gigabyte 770 for instance so yeah it's actually just the 7970, just kind of updated a little bit. But that's not a bad thing. It's really good. The driver's updated. Mantle's going to be coming out soon. I can't wait to try that with Battlefield 4. And we'll see what this is like. So yeah, I have got a video coming up comparing this with the GTX 770. Look out for that. I've got so many videos to come. But yeah.
so yeah, this comes highly recommended from me. If I were the if I was the type of person to do ratings out of things, I would definitely give this a nine out of ten. It's a very good card. I didn't test it on productivity, it was only done through gaming because that's really what this is all about, really. So I mean if you're using Premiere, Adobe or Adobe Premiere, as the Yanks like to say. <laughs> I've lost my train of thought now after saying that. Yeah, sorry, if you use Premiere, then the CUDA's good on the 770, but I'll go, go more into that when I'm comparing the two. Okay, so if you have any comments, please leave them below. I'd love to know what you think. Uh, this is my first time doing benchmarks and that, which is why I stuck to the games that have built-in benchmarks. So they would stay absolutely kind of... I ran them a good few times and kind of took the average between them. There were some surprising results. That I had to run a few times more, but there we go, it is what it is. I hope it turned out right. So, subscribe if you'd like to see more videos like this, and I will see you guys next time.